Uh, well, maybe there isn't an R10. I can't find one, so we'll go on to R11. Uh, there's a 12 and a 13. So R11 is 330K. Orange, orange, yellow. Orange, orange, yellow. That's there. Yes, yeah, so that was my main job, really. Uh, that lasted from 1985 to 1998. Field service engineer for liner type who made typesetting equipment. What am I doing? R11, was it? Yeah, R11. So I was on the road most of that time. That was when I wasn't in tech support. Because I get bored quickly. So I think I did two years on the road as a field service engineer. Then I took a tech support role, which was in-house. You, you went out occasionally, but not as often as the field service engineers who were out every day. And then I did five years tech support. Then I went back into... Uh, Field, support, field engineering again, five years on the road. And then a very brief spell in tech support before I left. Right, R11, so R12, 220 ohms. Uh, red, red, brown. Red, red, brown, I'll just check that because brown and black are quite hard to tell apart. Yeah, that's red, red, brown, 220 ohms. And that was a really good job. Prior to that, I worked at Smith's Industries in Bishop's Cleve near Cheltenham. 220 ohms. Which one is that again? R12. I'm distracting myself here. As an apprentice, and they put me on. Um, well, it was a. I don't know. It was a yearly release thing. I can't remember what it's called now, but went to. Uh, College, university, wasn't a university actually, it was Lanchester Polytechnic, which is probably now Coventry University. And I did computing and control systems. Uh, but I wasn't a very dedicated student because I was actually far more interested in designing audio mixers at the time. So I didn't really concentrate on my studies and I didn't get past the end of year two. And I got thrown out, which didn't look very good to my employer. Uh, so that was R12, R131K. So they then gave me a choice. Would you like to be sacked or would you like to go to college and do an HNC? Well, wasn't much of a choice, was it really? 1K, brown, black, red. So I went to the local college in Cheltenham and did an HNC in electronics and... Electrical and electronic engineering. Okay. R13. And because it was day release, that suited me because it meant that I had the whole of the rest of the week, week to do my crazy electronics. And so, of course, you know, past that, fine, no problem. R13, where are you? Well, there's R10. It's interesting, it's not on the list. Uh, there's R13. Uh, so I finished my HNC, and then they said, do you want to do an HND? It wasn't so much a do you want to, it's you're going to. So I start the HND, but I only got about three months into that, and then a magazine came round at the office, Electronics Weekly, I think. And, oh, that's fallen out, so let's poke that back in, I'll probably burn the finger now. Electronics Weekly, and there was an advert in there for the uh, field support job, and it said, company car. Well, company car. You'll take any job for a company car. And that was going to be electronics. The job at Smith Industries was erring more towards software. I was doing uh, test software in a language called Atlas, I think it was. Automatic test and... No, automatic test, something AS, yes, can't remember now. With uh, these automated test equipment systems. So now this is interesting. What's R10? It's not on this list, but is it in the circuit diagram? Hmm. Well, where was it again on here? 
there, there. So it goes to, what's that? That square thing. Oh, is that the inductor? Ah, so R10 must be up here somewhere. Hmm, can't find it. Oh well, that remains a mystery. Let's carry on. Uh, well, R13 is the last resistor, so are there any other resistors lying down here? No, there aren't. So, looks like I'm not going to have R10 in the circuit. That's really weird. It is on here. Well, it's on the board, but it's not in the circuit that I can find. Oh, let's not worry for the moment. Now on. Now they are. We're going onto the capacitors now. And these are, a lot of them are really low values, uh, 15 picofarads, 35p, 50p, 82p, 500 and, 502, 502 picofarads, now that's 502, which is, well, well 502 would be 5n, wouldn't it, because it's 5000, so 5000 picofarads is 5 nanofarads. 403104. Yeah, this is silly. It says 104p, but actually that's 100n. Capacitor marked 104. Well, I assume that's what it is. Let's see how we go. Okay, C1 and C2 are 50p. So I've got to find a couple of 50 peak farad capacitors. Now these should just be written in ink. 502, 82. So it should just be written on there as 50, or possibly 47, no, it's 50. So let's just take a look at that. So that says just 50. So we assume that that is 50 picofarads. Shove it in, in the position for C1. Uh, yeah, where was I? Yes, I was doing the, um, I saw the job for Linotype, which was with a company car and feel based so that you wouldn't be stuck in the office. I really didn't like being stuck in the office. And that job was fantastic. For the first two years, I remember thinking, this isn't like a job at all. This is just like having fun and earning money at the same time. So I would certainly recommend field service as a career. London's a bit tricky these days. We used to drive into London. I used to drive into London regularly. And you could park. And it was quite expensive. The company paid, of course, but you had to keep feeding the meters and making sure you didn't break any parking regulations. But it's just so much worse these days. 50. Because I stopped working uh, in London, I think before the congestion zones came in. They made things very difficult. Uh, so was that C1? Well, it's near L1, so that's a fair guess. Right, C2. I can see C3, C8. Where are you, C2, C4, C... Oh, there's C2 running across there. And that was 50p, wasn't it? 50p, yeah, there we go. Yeah, so working in London was all right, but then, you know, you've got the other days where... You were sent to Norwich or Southampton or something. I remember being sent to Norwich on a call for disk drive not working. And when I got there, it was an external disk unit, which was plugged into a wall socket and the switch wasn't down. So they'd not switched in on. So I drove to three hours to Norwich, pressed a switch on the uh, wall socket, said, there you are, that's fixed it and drove three hours back again. Right, C1 and C2 are 50p. C3, 82p. 82, there we are. Of course, you don't learn a lot from uh, a call like that, but I used to drive, enjoy the driving uh, as much as I enjoyed the 
fixing of machines. In fact, some days I just wasn't in the mood for fixing machines. And uh, just wouldn't have minded just driving all day, I suppose. Could have been a courier. Right, 10 minutes, let's cut it there.